Now we're going to go over installing your site with Duplicator install files. When you download one of the sites from the download page, you'll have a zip folder indicating it's the Duplicator install files for the site. You want to make sure and extract that zip folder so that you have an open folder. The open folder should have your uh, the actual site and installer.php. Those are the two files that we'll work with when installing the sites with Duplicator install files. First thing we're going to do is log into your cPanel account. Now, if you're add, or using an add-on domain, you want to make sure and already have added that domain to your hosting account. The first thing we're going to do is go down and create a database. We're going to scroll down to MySQL database wizard. Now we're going to give the database a name. That's a good idea to give it a name that distinguishes it so you know what the database is for which site. Then we click next step. I'm going to call the user the same thing as the database name. Now we need to generate a password. You want to make sure and copy this password to a notepad file. Once you have done that, we're going to cr uh, click create user. Now we're going to copy our database. And we only need to copy this to our notepad file one time since we named the user and the database the same. We're going to check the box for all privileges and click next step. At this point, we're done with the database so we can go and click home. Now we're ready to upload the files. We're going to go to file manager. At this point, if you're putting this on your main domain, you will see it here. If you're putting this on a subdomain or add on domain, you'll need to choose that by clicking the little arrow down. We're going to click go. Now, if you're putting this on your main domain, which is your public HTML, you won't have any files here. If you're putting this on an add-on domain or subdomain, you will need to select the folder for that uh, add-on domain or subdomain. So we're going to go inside the folder or the domain so that we can upload our files. At this point, we're going to click on Upload. Next, we're going to click on Browse. Now we're going to upload this zip file, which starts out with a number, and we're going to upload that. So we're going to click that and click Open. We're going to click Browse again, and we're going to upload the installer.php file. Now we're going to wait for these uh, files to upload. Once the files have completed uploading, we're going to click this link to go back to our file manager. Okay, so inside our file manager, we should now have the zip file and the PHP installer file. Now you want to open up a new browser tab and you're going to type in yourdomain.com, whatever your domain is, whatever the add-on domain is you put this site on, you're going to type in yourdomain.com forward slash installer.php. And that's going to take you to the installer script. Now we just need to enter the database information from the database we created earlier. So you want to get that from the notepad file that you copied it to. Once you've entered the information, just simply click Test Connection, and it should say Success. Next, we're going to check the box here, and then click Run Deployment, and then click OK. And just wait for it to get done. Next, we're going to click on Run Update. Next, it's going to give us some options. And what we're going to do is click on number two, which is Save Permalinks. It's going to open up the site in a new tab, and we'll need to log in with the login information that we provide you. Your login information will be in your downloads, or it could have been a direct download link from your download page, and it will be on a notepad file. We're going to use the provided login information to log in. After you log in, we're going to be on the permalinks page and we simply want to scroll down and click save changes. At this point our site is installed. Now what we want to do is click the link here to remove all of the installer files. So click the link here to remove files now. And you should see this information here letting you know that it had deleted and removed all of the installer files. At this point, we're going to start setting up the site. 
and we'll see you in the next video and we'll get started doing this.